Hello, this is Aaron from Parallax, and this is just a quick video to go over uh, the workflow we've been using for updating or replacing our units, which start out with placeholder groups and then make their way into full-fledged groups. Uh, to give some brief backstory, when we're initially laying out the building, we start with what we call a placeholder group, uh, which basically is just a series of model lines using a particular subcategory, uh, and then we draw a diagonal through it so that we can keep track of where the extents of the unit are. The reason we work with these is there's kind of two parallel tracks that are going on. There's the actual building design where really all we're concerned about is where does the core and shell end up and where do the demise walls themselves end up. At the same time that's going on, somebody's generally working on actual unit design and what those units want to look like, including all of their interior partitions, appliances, millwork, things of that nature. But these tracks don't always happen at the same time. Uh, so while we're working on the core and shell, we've created these groups that are just model lines like so, and they're very lightweight. Uh, and then when we get to a point where we're ready to reconcile, we'll actually port these out to uh, a completely different file uh, where the units themselves are being developed. And that allows us to basically overlay the two and start to push and pull on the minor aspects of the unit design, which is how do they align with demise walls, where are the boundaries, uh, and so on. So then what we end up with is we have a building uh, that has the placeholder units in it, and if we go over to what we call the unit cloud, we obviously have the placeholders that are sitting here like so. Now, if we look, this is the unit that's just called 1320, uh, and we want to replace it. Um, if we go show you the working unit file, uh, the one where the units were reconciled, and this is a throwaway file, it's going to end up uh, being discarded as soon as we're done with this last unit. So here you'll see this is now a compilation unit. Uh, the model lines are there as well. We've just taken out the <clears throat> diagonal line. Now what we've done here though is uh, our groups typically do not keep any of the exterior or demise wall information in them. And you'll see we have one little mix up here where there's a demise wall in this group. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to go down to that group. Um, I'll need to sync with central first because my sync with central timer says so. Now that we've finished with the sync, we'll actually go through the whole process of re-exporting and uh, bringing in this group after we fix it. So the first thing we're going to do is, of course, this wall is not supposed to be in the group. Probably got added as an accident. So the group 1320 is the one that we care about simply because in the unit cloud we have demise walls and we have fenestration that we want to show, uh, there's then a parent group that's put over the 1320 group. And this one's just called temporary. Uh, really what we care about here is that it's going to bring in uh, the subgroup. Now here's where things get a little interesting. If you name your groups with periods like we do, uh, Revit will try to convert those names to hyphens when you export them. And that gets extremely annoying when you want to bring them back into the other file. So the nice thing about using a parent group that's just called temporary is it will not rename the subgroups that you export, which is kind of funny. Uh, so I am going to go back into our subgroup here because we do have one strange uh, thing where there seems to be a constraint that it wants to exclude. We may have to look in the parent file uh, to fix that. Now what we're going to do is this is our throwaway file again. And the reason we use this throwaway file, by the way, is we like to vet to make sure there's no face-based families, uh, to make sure all of our wall types, millwork types, and such are consistent. And the throwaway file just provides us one extra gate to clear that stuff out so that it doesn't make its way into the project. So we have the parent group now, uh, which is right here. And we're going to go into the parent group and add that demise wall in because, of course, we took it out of the... Um, subgroup. Um, and it appears there might be another issue here. So let's go take a look at what is. Okay, so there was a slight order of operations issue there. Uh, the doors were in the parent group um, and the demise wall was not. And that was just a misclick. So I had to remove the doors and then add the demise wall and then I could add the doors back in. Again, that's all the temporary throwaway group. The group that we care about is just our unit, uh, and it's in good standing here. 
So now again, from our throwaway file, what we're going to do is we're going to go find our 1320 temp group, and we're going to just use save group. It's important to note this will allow you to attach detail groups, which can be all of the dimension views for this group. So we're going to save that, and I've got a folder for it. Now this will obviously prompt us to overwrite because I already have this group exported. And we'll say yes to overwrite. Okay. Uh, and the last thing that we're going to check is I'm going to actually uh, go into the throwaway group. I should have done this before I exported it. I'm going to select the group and make sure that our origin for the group is where we want it to be, which is the interior corner uh, at the entrance. Perfect. So now we're going to just go back to our normal file instead of our throwaway file. From here, we're ready to do the actual reload. <clears throat> now, one thing to keep in mind because 1320 doesn't have all of its demise walls and things in the unit cloud, we're not going to reload 1320. We're going to load the temporary shrink wrapped group. That's going to bring in all of the demise walls and things that we also have drawn in our unit cloud. This is a standard Revit function under insert load as group, and we'll go pick our 1320 temporary file that we just made uh, a minute ago. You'll notice here again, we're going to tell it to bring in attached detail groups. We are not going to bring in any levels or grids. Uh, whoops. So if you have uh, attached detail groups in, in the way of drawings and annotations and dimensions and things of that nature, you can do that. So we'll click open. It's always going to warn us that it's greater than 10 megs, at least with our models, because they're always going to be larger than 10 megs. Now, one area that I really wish we could see some improvement in Revit is that in a minute, we're going to get a dialogue uh, that tells us about duplicate family types, and that's fine. We're going to say use the type that are in the project. The next dialogue that we're going to get is going to be about the fact that the groups in the project already exist. And it's asking us, do you want to update these group definitions or do you want to swap them? Now, here's where it gets interesting. Our preferred answer for all three of these groups is going to be different. On the 1320 group, we obviously want it to update. On the nested bath vanity groups, I really don't want it to, because those are used in many of the other groups and they've already been reloaded. For instance, one of these could be the exact same vanity and it's already been reloaded while I've done the other groups. Unfortunately, Revit's not going to give us an opportunity to select which one gets updated and which one doesn't. What that means is in a project like this, where we had about 13 units to reload, when you click yes to start this reload, the first unit was very, very fast. This one took a little longer, this one took a little longer, this one took a little longer, and the last one is actually going to take a pretty considerable amount of time. Why? It has to now reload bath vanity 59 inches, which exists in way more than just the 1320 group. Last time I checked, there were 200 and something instances of that vanity in the project. Nevertheless, we're going to click yes, and it's going to start to update our groups. Okay, so that group has reloaded. And now uh, you'll notice that it doesn't look quite right. Um, and that's because, of course, what we did is uh, this is the group 1320 and not the shrink wrapped group, which is the uh, demise walls and everything. So this is a one time thing that we do here. We're actually going to just remove uh, the 1320 group from the unit cloud. And we're going to uh, place the 1320 shrink wrapped group. And I'm going to just place it down below for right now, and then we'll move it into the right position after. You'll see that it was mostly trying to go into the right spot, but it's not exact. Uh, the exact right spot, so I prefer to just redo it to make sure that it goes exactly where we want it to go. Okay, now that we have this group placed, of course, we're going to just take the shrink wrapped group and we're going to move it back into the unit cloud at the correct location. And then, of course, the shrink wrapped group doesn't need to stay. It was a temporary thing. That's why we named it as such. So if we ungroup this, 
you'll see that now what's left is again our 1320 group and then all the demise partitions around it. And we still have an interesting constraint that seems to uh, be sticking around. Um, I'll restore it, which it will allow us to do, and later I'll go back and check and see if there's actually a constraint that I need to delete. A couple of things to note, uh, because this is multifamily apartments, we have furnishings that are shown um, within the groups. Uh, they're not part of the unit group just because there's no added value in having them populate in context. Um, I would typically populate them in context just for the imagery, so we'll probably go back and add them to the group in a detached version just to see them throughout the building. But now if we do select all the entire project, the, you'll see there weren't a lot of this unit. There were only four, um, including the one in the cloud. But if we were to go find a couple just to see how they populated, you'll see here that now the reconciled unit has replaced the one that... Uh, had just the model lines in it and now we still have some work to do in terms of none of our entry doors are currently in uh, the demise partitions and that's what we'll be doing as part of our next step so this is just our workflow uh, to basically get our units all updated we obviously have two more that we still need to do uh, and we'll bust out a sync with central and if we go look basically at any of our perspectives that are looking down at one of the buildings there are five buildings in total in this file, uh, about 400 units. You'll see that now we've filled in the units from the images uh, last night that weren't filled in yet, with the exception of the unit type we still need to model. So we'll be doing that next.